Welcome back, everybody. And we are ending our calendar year by bringing in a stud, Mr. Tyrell Crosby, former Oregon Duck product, former offensive lineman for the Detroit Lions, has happily joined us to discuss his career, to discuss the Super Bowl, and then whatever else we want to throw on the table. A lot of people don't know that th this guy is Utah, Utah born, but he's Vegas raised. This is a this is a local product, and we are very appreciative of you coming in today, man. Welcome to World of Matchups. Oh, thank you for having me. All right, so let's get to the game right off the bat. All right, look, we we want to get the, the the predictions and the previews out there. Okay, all week long. All I keep hearing about is Joe Burr and the Cincinnati Bengals and how this is a team of destiny, blah, blah, blah. And, and while I don't disagree with a lot of that, I have to tell you that I'm a big Matt Stafford supporter, and I have a hard time seeing how the Rams lose this game, okay? Now, we're not going to get into over-unders and any of that crazy stuff, or we can if you like. I'm telling you right now, I think four and a half is a slap in the face. I love the Rams to win this game by at least a touchdown. I think the defense is going to be the difference. I know a lot of people see a lot of Tom Brady in Joe Burrow. I'm one of them, but it cannot be a one-man show. Guys like Von Miller were brought in for such a time like this. Guys like Odell Beckham were brought in for such a time like this. So I'm going to go over. I'm going to go with Rams minus four, and I think the home field, albeit not a real home field in L.A., will make the difference. These guys are waking up in their beds and coming straight to the stadium. Your thoughts on this year's Super Bowl? Yeah, so uh, my thoughts – I mean, the Bengals haven't been known for their O-line, <laughs> and the Rams are known for their D-line and their defense as a whole. So um, it's going to be an interesting game, definitely a game one up front. Um, so whoever wins that battle in the trenches is going to win that game. Yeah, and we already know that if you can't protect, you can't win. Yeah. <laughs> and we've seen that offensive line on Cincinnati – be a little suspect from time to time. They did really well versus Kansas City, yep. but they did give up nine sacks versus the Titans, and there's nobody on the Titans. That's the caliber of guys like Von Miller and Aaron Donald. I do think they're going to have to double Donald. Yep. As an offensive lineman, a former offensive lineman, what do you do to try to stop a guy like Aaron Donald coming at you <laughs> a million miles an hour? Did uh, you ever play against Aaron Donald? Yeah, you I'm did, right? Him. So uh, You really just got to stand in front of him. He's so fast with his hands. Um uh, and that's the hard part with that defense. You have Leonard Floyd, you have Von Miller, you have Aaron Donald, Justin Hollins. Like, it is a legit front. Um, Greg Gaines is another powerful D tackle. So, you got to double team somebody, but that frees up a Von Miller, that frees up a Leonard Floyd, who are both very talented on the edge. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's going to be an interesting matchup. And like you said with the Chiefs game, like the if the uh, the Bengals show up as an O line and play consistent like they did that game. It'll be a very close game. It'll be close, yeah. But if they show up like they did against Tennessee... It's over. That D-line will have a field day, and they they really do rally around one another. You watch them get a sack, that entire sideline, that entire defense is all cheering. And when you're on the other side of something like that, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. I can't imagine. What's your prediction? What's your score prediction? I'm going to go I'm gonna go 31-21 Rams. Uh, pull away late. I'm going to pull a uh, – think – or not Cincinnati. Uh, the Simpsons had a, this game. <laughs> Did you see that? Simpsons, I think they said 27-30 or like 33-30. I it's, saw that. Yeah, so I'm like, hmm. I might lean on to whatever the Simpsons said. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I think they picked, I think they picked Cincinnati, yeah, too. Plus, I saw that. I'll, they haven't always been right, but a lot of what the Simpsons have said in the past has come to fruition. <laughs> So I, 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 I definitely could do with that. It's getting to the point with me where I'm starting to kind of feel very Tom Brady-ish with Joe Burrow. Yeah. Every time I bet against him, I'm wrong. <laughs> Every single time. Every single time. And I think that if this turns into the type of thing where I bet against him again and he pulls this Super Bowl out in year two coming off that huge injury, mm -hmm. you know, we're happy Tom Brady's retired, but here comes Tom Brady Jr. Yep. It could be that type of thing. If they ever get their offensive line together, Cincinnati's going to be a team that's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the National Football League now for the next 10, 15 years with yep. those weapons. Yep. So let's pivot. You're a local product. You play in Green Valley. You get drafted. You go to Oregon. U of O is a great place to play. Yep. You break your ankle versus Nebraska. At that point, what's going through your head? Uh, so, yeah. That was an interesting thing. So it was like my fifth met on my foot uh, going into that season uh, during training camp. I was like, I'm having weird foot pain as we're doing different conditioning stuff. 
And so I go over, talk to the trainer, and my buddy Justin's like, sounds like you might have a, a broken foot. Mm. So I was like, oh, there's no way. So you like, That's a pretty common injury in football. Um, so I, I've seen guys go through it. I've heard about it. But I was like, oh, that's never going to be me. So it happened. It was me. So uh, go get it looked at. Found out I had a stress fracture. And so it was a weird moment of – do I get the surgery now? Because I'm going into my junior year. Just came off a really good sophomore year. Um, so I was questioning if I get the surgery, just try to play through it. Maybe it lasts and just heals itself. Unfortunately, uh, third game of that season versus Nebraska at Nebraska, um, I think it was like a 28-yard touchdown run by Tony, uh, Tony Brooks James. It's a power. So I'm coming uh, off my double team to climb up to a linebacker. As I plant my foot, I just hear a pop. Mm. And – it was the craziest thing because Nebraska is known for having their fans that bring over a hundred thousand fans to that game. Like that's the biggest city in Nebraska at that time, um, is that stadium. So through all that crowd noise, I could hear my foot just snap, and immediately I knew what was wrong. And in my head, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna just try to walk it off real fast. And then I see Tony just sprinting past. And I'm like, this dude's about to score a touchdown, and I got to do field goal. So. I'm hobbling down because it scored, so I got to do field goal before I can get off the field. And so I'm hobbling down, get lined up, and we call the trick like field goal play. So now I have to jog to the hashes on a broken foot, and I'm just like, this is not fun right now. <laughs> um, and so we do that. Um, I do my best to have a, like try to maintain that block. Did a terrible job. Go figure. But um, get back to the sideline and look over to my coach. I'm like, I'm hurt. I- I think it's broke. <laughs> and so uh, naturally he's like, ask me if I can play on it, what I can do, try to tape it up to see if I can handle that pain, which I couldn't. Um, had to walk to the x-ray machine room, uh, got an x-rayed, and then they gave me, they're like, oh, yeah, it's broken. And then they gave me crutches. And that was the probably the funniest moment of my life because that was my first time using crutches. And I'm on the opposite side of the stadium from our locker room. So I got to go past the field. So I'm crutching. And this is literally like my first time ever using crutches. And I am just overextending. And I am almost falling every single stride. And I'm just looking at the crowd, just trying not to embarrass myself by falling. And I finally get to the locker room. And then I slipped. (laughs) I was like, I made it so far. And I was so close. And then I finally slipped. But luckily, it was in the locker room. So I was the only person that noticed. Yeah. Well, you bounce back really well <laughs> yeah. because you come back from your junior year to your senior year, and all of a sudden you're your first team Pac-12. <laughs> you know, and, and and from there having a fantastic season. And we've got some footage of you trucking some dudes, and a lot of people don't know. Okay, this is an athletic six foot four, three hundred and fifteen pound gentleman dunking over people, moving the pile, pushing people all over the field. There's a reason why you get drafted. Okay, you go fifth round to the 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 Detroit Lions who need help everywhere, and you make an impact right away, okay? You're not a household name, but you should be. (laughs) I appreciate that. But you should be because I think offensive linemen don't get the love that they deserve. They get nice watches, and they get, you know, some coats from from the quarterback. But without you, the quarterback is nothing. That team should be one unit, and that job that you do and had done was fabulous coming out of U of O, and then you go to the Lions, and then the rest is history. Sadly, you get hurt after playing a couple of years for the Lions, and you get waived with an injury designation, and here you are. <laughs> yep. What is going through your head when they release you? Uh, so, yeah, that was, it was interesting. That was my first time going through that process. So um, maybe just kind of j- jump on the phone with my agent, kind of go over the steps, uh, and – it was a unique situation, um, especially what was going on, because um, I was going through an injury. Um, so kind of figure out what we need to get done. Um, so get injury waived. Um, and through that whole process, as in, like that was my first time going through anything similar to that. Um, so it was all new to me. Had to ask a lot of questions. And and. up finding out what was wrong with me, uh, get put on IR for the team. So finished throughout the year on IR. Um, now I'm just trying to rehab, get back to healthy. Mm. Boy, that's <laughs> tough. It's, uh, it's definitely tough. The it? NFL stands for not for long. <laughs> that's why I will never be against a player getting paid. Yeah. Never. I don't care. 
yep. get that money because a lot of people don't realize what happens in those trenches. These guys sacrifice their bodies to bring us entertainment and one wrong hit and it's over. So we, we, we talked a little bit before we, we came on live about what the future looks like for you, you know, and I thought to myself, well, could this guy potentially play again? I don't know how bad his back is. Your thoughts on the future if the phone rang? Uh, so um, right now I'm just trying to take it one day at a time, really. Uh, just trying to get back to healthy, get back to normal. Uh, have some side projects outside the league that I'm working on, one being an insurance lounge. But uh, really just trying to focus on getting back to – being able to even play yeah i totally hear that man and we wish you nothing but the best we wish you well i know not from personal experience but when things like this happens it kind of derails like your thought pattern of what you thought the next 10 years would look like you know we our mutual friend you know dila talks a little bit about what he thought would his life would have looked like and then tragedy strikes and then all of a sudden you know god's got a different plan for you let's talk about insurance lounge yep sponsor of the show thank you insurance lounge Check out Insurance Lounge, folks, for all your insurance needs online, in person. That's the way to go, okay? Let us know what you're doing in that capacity. Yeah, so uh, I just franchised a location. Um, first one in Nevada, which is exciting. Um, it's my first kind of business venture. Uh, so, yeah, right now, just finished signing up the lease, about to start my build-out process. And it's been a real enjoyment for me just because I've been so sports world my entire life mm -hmm. and kind of – now this is my opportunity to learn business world, and it's just been a blast just because it's been so much learning, and I love to learn. I love to educate myself, um, and that's what this entire process has really been is everything I'm doing is new to me for the first time, and it's given me the opportunity to really lean on people like Dila to like pick his brain, figure out how everything works. I have a buddy named Alec who's been phenomenal just understanding the business aspect, um, so yeah, that's what's kind of been going on right now. That's great. And it just goes to show that there is life after football. Sadly, for so many athletes in the NFL, football is what they know. Football is all they know. And then they retire and they're not really left with a lot. You know, a lot of people think, well, I'll just get a booth job or I'll <laughs> just, I'll just do this. I'll just, you know, commentate, you know, n not everybody is Bill Cowher. Yeah. You know, not everyone gets Sean Payton's, you know, potential opportunities pushed in front of them. Some of these guys really have nothing to fall back on. And so I'd like to say to all you athletes out there, let this be a lesson to you that like, you know, one bad thing can happen. And all of a sudden your hopes and dreams are dashed, you know, and you're pre presented with an opportunity to do something different and still be successful. And I think that's what Tyrell is showing you guys is that it can be about football, but you definitely want to have some other things brewing because Never you'll know. just be a, you'll be another athlete that no one cares about, sadly. <laughs> yeah. And that's sad. That's the hardcore truth. But that's what we bring here at Grab It is the hardcore truth. It's it, you know, the crowd is not always gonna be chanting your name <laughs> yep. for 20, 30, 40 years like a Joe Montana or a Tom Brady. You know, some of us little guys have to grind and start over. So let's end with a little controversy. I follow you all over the place, and I, I like something that you said. And a, tr a tweet that you sent out in January went viral, you know, that you felt like as athletes, if we're not allowed to bet, you know, why are the government officials allowed to buy stock and stop stock options? You know, and some things have happened recently around that where, you know, like I said earlier, if, if, if there were no double standards, some people would have no standards at all. You yeah, know, right. and you said that, and it just blew up. And there was a whole bunch yeah. of – whole a whole lot of brushback. But, you know, you also said that NFL is real life. Yep. A lot of people think that the NFL is just this game we play and they have no idea what goes on behind the NFL. I've worked for the NFL. I've seen what goes on. I've seen what it takes. Speak to that. Yep. Uh, so to uh, my, like the first tweet, I think I was just like – I was in bed. It was like I think one-ish in the morning, and I saw a FanDuel commercial go on about like betting the Super Bowl, and that's where that like the thought process triggered. I'm like – Last year, I mean, I knew the Bucks were going to win by easily over 10. Like, that defense, that offense, you're not stopping it. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, if NFL players could bet, that would be insane. Because, I mean, one, if you're betting on your, your team, you never know, like, the swear. If you, there's a lot of, like, pull you can do, and it's just it ruins the integrity of the game. Mm -hmm. So then it got me to thinking, because I'm a public policy major. I love public policy. I love – reading it um, and all that and just know the impact it can have on the marketplace. So that's where I started really thinking. I'm like, how often do politicians sign bills, pass policy, and do any of that 
and benefit from it financially every day exactly so it's just like every day makes you makes you wonder exactly and it's just the integrity of are they doing that for the correct reasons to benefit the people that are around them um the people that have voted them into those office spaces or are they doing it just to benefit themselves they're like the family and do all that because then it's like it really just makes you question how trustworthy that candidate is Mm -hmm. and that's a whole (laughs) and 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 boy grab it is we're big on politics here grab it television we have a whole bunch of different political aspects and views that that come out from different shows daily but i i I like people that are willing to pull other people's sheets Mm -hmm. i like people that are willing to not be so much side takers but truth seekers and and, and i saw that and i i I, it made me like you even more (laughs) i appreciate that you know it made me like you even more so on behalf of Grab It Television, Spencer Lewis, myself, Michelle Mortensen, and everybody else involved in this this process, we really thank you for coming on. You know, we're 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 building World of Matchups from the ground up. I've sent a million letters out to players and never heard back. So when when we get an actual player to not only do a Skype show but to come in and and be willing to give up their time, we are a hundred percent behind you and super super appreciative of what we do. We look forward to working with you guys in the Insurance Lounge in the future. We're going to definitely run this back and do this again next year. Spencer and I are about to meet and and brainstorm what, what we can do to be better to bring everybody the NFL news, but to bring everybody real life with real players because most people have no idea what happens in the National Football League during, yep. <laughs> after, and, you know, it doesn't always end well. You know, here's a situation where, for the most part, it has ended well. And so we wish you well in your rehab. We hope everything comes back even better. We're praying for you that everything goes well, and we look forward to having you here again in the future, my man. Thanks again for coming on. I appreciate you having me. Always. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tyrell Crosby.